Welcome. This is Richard Dunn of the Meadowood Church of God. Thank you for joining our One Race, One Blood Bible study. Um, each one of these lessons build upon the previous lesson. So if you haven't uh, seen uh, the previous lesson, this is lesson two, please go back and, and watch that and catch up. So, But I believe this is a very necessary study, especially during the times that we're facing here in uh, 2020. Uh, so let's begin lesson two. This lesson is talking about the uh, unity of humanity. You know, the terms racism, prejudice, discrimination, white, black races are common in the media and in our culture. Um, we've been pro programmed to classify people based almost solely on their physical characteristics. So these social racial conditions, uh, divisions, I should say, are usually rooted in evolutionary ideas. But, but racism has absolutely no basis in Scripture. Last week, and please go back and watch Lesson 1 if you haven't, but last week we uh, focused on our common origin created by God and descended from Adam. We're all one biological race. And in this lesson, we will see how all mankind are unified by our sin nature and thus our need for a Savior. Uh, before we address the sin nature in our culture, we have to examine the sin in our own lives. So our focus in this lesson is that we are all sinful people and we deserve death, but we also need a Savior. So we have so much in common in that unity of humanity. First, let's look at the story of Cain. Uh, we read in Genesis 4, verses 1 through 8. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, sin is crouching at the door. His desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Cain worked out in the field, and Abel was a shepherd of the flocks. Cain was unwilling to honor God properly while Abel acted more honorably. Cain killed his own brother and tried to cover up the sin. So we see the sin cycle continuing. We know that Adam and Eve were the parents of Cain and Abel and of all humanity. We know the first sin began with Adam and Eve. Now we see how sin, the sin nature is transferred from parent to offspring. Let's look at this sin cycle by going to the flood recorded in Genesis chapter 6. We read in verse 5, The Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the, and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So you see, sin continues to flourish, and people continue to think evil. And verse 11 says, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight. And the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. 
So the evil nature of humanity continues to expand. God decided to start over using the flood to judge all who rebelled against him. Um, all had rebelled and God could no longer allow them to live in this state. As merciful as we know God to be, can you imagine how bad it must have been for God to destroy the whole world, his own creation? God chose Noah to build the ark so Noah and his family could be saved. God starts over with Noah and his family. And even though the sin cycle had spread to all mankind, God found favor in Noah. Here we see God's grace in his desire to save humanity. Now we move to the story of the Tower of Babel. In Genesis 11, we can see the sin cycle continues. Verse 1 says, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, in other words, they were moving to this one place, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its tops in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are, are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they purpose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their languages so that they may not understand one another. So God, the Lord, dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. So the people of Babel decided to build a tower. They sought to control their own destiny, become great, and make a name for themselves. Remember, they had been told to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Once again, we see rebellion in that they sought to control their own destiny and to become great. The sin cycle continues to show up. They don't want to live for God's glory. They want to live for themselves. Their greatness will no longer come from God, but they decide to make a name for themselves. They want to make themselves great. The people of Babel sought to control their own destiny and become great, but God thwarted their plans by confusing their language. Now we see they're going to be dispersed all over the earth. All the languages in the earth today started from this dispersion of people. So, so far we have seen the amazing God and his amazing creation. And we see the rebellion of, of mankind and how the sin cycle is passed from generation to generation. But we also need to understand that God is a gracious God. He is a seeking God. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, who seeks after them? God. He came into the garden as he normally did, seeking to walk and talk with his new creation. And God seeks a relationship with Adam and Eve. When all the people of the whole earth became wicked, God sought out Noah to continue his relationship with mankind. God desires to begin again. This is a gracious God desiring to save humanity. He's also, he also clothes Adam and Eve. 
the coverings God made for Adam and Eve were more than just clothing. The coverings made of animal skin symbolized something. Adam and Eve became aware of their own naked, nakedness, and the nakedness represented the sin nature that they had taken on. The only appeasement for sin is death. God told them early on, if you disobey me, if you eat of this tree, you will surely die. Something must be sacrificed and die to cover the sin of humanity. That is how how dire, how desperate, how terrible sin is. It separates man from God. But not only was God covering the naked body, but the animal skin clothing symbolized the covering of their sin. By the killing of an innocent animal to cover the bodies and the blood to cover their sin. In the Garden of Eden, God established the principle of sacrificing of animals for the covering of sin. This was a foreshadow of the ultimate and last sacrifice of God's own Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary to cover the sins of all humanity. No more animal sacrifices are needed. Jesus was the Lamb of God. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice who gave His own life's blood to cover our sin. Without that sacrifice, and mankind is doomed to a hell that was created for Satan and his angels, not created for man. Won't you believe in Jesus today and accept him as your Lord and your Savior? But God gave a promise. He's a seeking God. He has closed our sins and he gives a promise in Genesis 3. From the very beginning, he begins to give us a promise of restoration. The Lord said in verse 14, Genesis 3, To the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock, above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, but you shall bruise his heel. The offspring of Satan are those who rebel against God. Today, Satan's offspring are those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ and begin a relationship with him and live for him and for his glory. But Eve's offspring, he's talking about the Son of God. Serpent Satan would bruise or bite the heel of Jesus by crucifixion. But Jesus would bruise or crush Satan, the serpent's head, in the end by raising from the dead. So where is the unity of humanity? The unity of creation is the teaching that all humanity derives from the origin of one created couple. This is seen in Paul's statement that God made all nations from one man. In Acts 17, 26, the word says, And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place. Some translations say from one man is to say from one blood. We are all related. Therefore, according to Scripture, there's only one race, the human race. Different skin colors is not what gives us our worth. Our worth comes from the fact that we are created by God and for God, made in the image of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and that He made a way for us to, be, to remain worthy of Him through Jesus, his son. Jesus made a way for humanity to be reconciled to God. We see a rationale in Genesis 3, verse 20, for the name of Eve given to her by Adam that means she's a mother of all living. She is our, our mother. So we all share a common human nature. 
Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all sinned. And we share a common human need. Um, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we need salvation. We all need restoration and reconciliation to God. And then the gospel is the message for all humans of all nations. Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20 says, Go, and this is the words of Christ. He says, Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The unity of humanity is reflected in the fact that each human has more in common with each other, genetically, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. With the human, even with the human most different from them, than he has with any other creature of any other species. This is why Adam found no suitable helper among all other creatures that God had made, Genesis 2. 220. The unity of humanity teaches us that there were only two people in the beginning, Adam and Eve. They were both very good and made in the image of God. However, they rebelled and sinned against their Creator. The Bible teaches us that all humanity comes from Adam and Eve, and therefore we are all one race and one blood. Since we are descendants of Adam and Eve, we are all fallen and need salvation. God sent Jesus to deliver us from death, sin, and Satan. And through Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross, we can be reconciled to God. Many people have asked these questions. Where did we come from? The answer is, we were created by God. They ask, why are we here? The answer is to live for God to love God and have relationship with Him. Some would say, well, who am I? You are a child of God. If you accept Christ and reconcile to Him, you become His child, created and loved and accepted by God. And some would ask, where am I going? Well, we are going to be with God when we die or when Jesus Christ returns to take us with Him. We will be with Him for all eternity. That's where we're going. In the meantime, we are to spread the gospel, spread the good news that there is reconciliation, there is restoration, there is salvation from this sin cycle that we have been discussing. And we can be restored to a rightful relationship with God where He once again can walk and talk with us through the power of His Holy Spirit that Jesus sent back to the earth after He ascended to heaven to to be at the Father's right hand. He said, I will send a comforter. He must go away. He said, I must go away that I may send the comforter. The comforter is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God, who is God. And He comes to dwell and live inside of every believer so that we can now have this communion that we once had, that Adam and Eve once had in the garden. And every believer, every born-again believer, We're born by the Spirit, not by flesh. We're born in the Spirit of God. And we are restored to Him to have this wonderful relationship with Him. The curse is upon the earth. The curse of sin is upon the world. That's why we see all of the tragedy. That's why we see all of the, even the natural disasters. And we see humanity raging and and fighting and warring and rebelling. And all types of of sin is being spread through the earth. And it's becoming greater and greater and greater. And the Bible says that as when it becomes as it were in the days of Noah, we shall begin to see the end. That means Jesus will return. And we are seeing that happen now. I, I 
implore you, uh, make a relationship with God. Become a born-again believer and say, I receive Christ as my Savior. Forgive me of all of my sin, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness righteousness by the blood you shed on Calvary and make me in right relationship with you. And I will strive to live for you, to have relationship with you, and to spread this good news of forgiveness and restoration to all that I can. Will you do that? God bless you. Please tune in next week for Lesson 3 of our study, One Race, One Blood. God bless.